Welcome to South Cerny Airfield near Sirencester in Gloucestershire. We are enthusiasts of British motor vehicles and just a few short weeks after our last driving tour we are on the road again, this time for the 2022 Gloucestershire Vintage and Country Extravaganza which is one of our favourite events on the classic calendar. It's a hot day and the group is enjoying the shade while we take a look at their classics park nearby. Firstly, Anthony's beautiful MGB, then Gar's Mark I Mondeo, and you can see the Fisher Holly van behind. Alison Brooks owns the A35, which is for sale, and Paul Cheatham has kindly brought along a Rolls Royce Corniche, along with a small friend. Next up, Mike Peake's beautiful Triumph Herald, Poppy. Then next to that is the Ian Woodward's Mark II Ford Granada Estate. And then finally, Phil Allen's Rover P5B Coupe, of course. Next, we'll have a quick look at some of the other classic cars around the site. And first up, we have some pre-millennial cars, a beautiful pair of 1991 Rover Metros, which belong to a husband and wife. These are the Mark III Metro, and coincidentally, uh, members Anthony and Pat tell us that they have a pair of Rover 100s, which is the next model after these two, and theirs are also in the same colour. They're fantastic little cars. Next to them is a Mini Mayfair, and of course the Metro is related to the Mini, as initially the early Metros shared the same engine and gearbox, until the K-Series engine was put into later Metros. This is a, an early 1928 Austin 7. This year the Austin 7 starts, uh, celebrates its centenary. Uh, the first one's coming off the line and being sold in 1922. You can tell this is an early one as the uh, headlamp for mounted on the scuttle, uh, whereas the car next to it, another Austin 7, the headlamps as you'll see are mounted adjacent to the radiator room. These cars were small and uh, it was very cramped in them and you had to be chums to ride in them. Um, one way of telling a gentleman from anyone else was that he didn't interfere with the young lady's knee changing into second gear. Another Austin, this time slightly bigger. This is an Austin 12, an Ascot. The uh, between the Austin 7 and the Austin 12 would be the Austin 10. And uh, the 12 was uh, a bit more luxurious and a bit bigger than the 10, which was really the rep mobile of the era. Another Austin 7. This is the Austin 7 Ruby, the last of the line. The final Rubies came off the production line in 1938-39 after some uh, 330,000 Austin 7s had been built. Uh, not only at Longbridge, but across the world, including at Eisnash, where the Dixie Motorcycle Company took a license to build them. They were bought by BMW and uh, that was BMW's first motor car. Well, we all know of Gar's Green Caravan. I found another one that's uh, just a tad larger, but it's also trying to become green. Maybe there's an opportunity here, Gar, um, to, to renovate this one if you can persuade someone to part with it. Amongst all the cars here is a goodly display of Morris Miners and other British Island vehicles with a few foreigners in between. And uh, here's one for our late friend Zebedee who would have been getting excited in his pantaloons at seeing such a nice fox Over here we have a very early Austin 7 Mini 
product of Longbridge and uh, looking lovely because it's, it's got a bit of patina to it. It doesn't look like it's just coming off the production line like so many cars do. <laughs> we had, an, we had an update that? done on it, <laughs> and then it went wrong again on my birthday, so they agreed to replace it with a Hero 10, which I've got. Then we ordered another brand new Hero 9, which Andy's got there, and we went up to Yorkshire. <laughs> It's a working on board the Corniche. <laughs> it's a shame it's such a bright sunny day. Yeah. It's quite hard to see everything. What was that beep? He's found it now, yeah. It? The, the gimbal couldn't find the camera. How smooth this car is. Yeah. Even over all the massive bombs. Even on this dreadful airfield yeah. surface. It's ever so smooth, isn't it? It is. And now you gotta drive it all the way home. I know, it's yeah. a hard life. Yes, it? it is a hard life, isn't it? First car. <laughs> we even get lost on the airfield, never mind on tour. <laughs> that's that's a beast that isn't it? Yeah, the diamond T. News to me. Yeah. 
Now the standard Vanguard, they did fit the diesel engine very similar to in the Fergies. Did they? <laughs> so refined. We do love the Rolls Royce. I think it's a Viceroy. I think that's what Mike loves. Mike Peak, is that a Viceroy? With red velour. Let's have a look. Is it? Viceroy? Yeah, I do like that. But I like that cos of the velour. All together. Whoa. <laughs> it's just, you know, it is the 80s, isn't it? Yeah. That's the car. That's 
Oh, what, sorry, MGC. That's a C, that's yeah, a 3 litre one. 3 litre, straight to one. I thought they had a bike bulge. Oh yeah, I need to go spec savers. Good. Excellent. Now, Morris Huxley. Mark, uh, Morris Cowley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a fantastic array of cars, it is, isn't it? Exactly. It's a bit of absolutely everything. Now I got this one wrong yesterday because I had Austin 6, but this is an Austin 12. Then we got a 105 EA, 1968. Is that what that is? Yeah, absolutely lovely. Thank you for bringing that in. I have one of those as well. Mine was on an E wrench. Sounds nice too. Fairly young lad driving the CR6. Yeah. 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 You drive it like yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. No, I do like that. It's a lovely car. Yeah. Especially on the wires. Yeah, it's well on wires. And it is a Jetson Healy. Oh wow, that's quite rare. We don't have to see any of those. Soft top. Lovely car, TR6 here, 1974. Excellent, good. Spoke wheels. Lovely little car this. Sounds absolutely lovely with that six cylinder engine in it. You can tune in that vehicle. Now, Triumph Chip Fire. Yes? What year? 1978, Triumph Chip Fire. All original? No, different exhaust, but bodywork, same except for the car. Excellent, lovely, thank you very much. Now, I am not even going to guess this one, but I would say, looking at the bonnet, it is going to be an Austin 10. Well, I've got the Austin bit, right? So, lovely. Thank you for bringing that in, and we'll talk a little bit more as you go around. Thank you, that's much well. Here, this has got to be like a, a <laughs> Series 3. It's a Series 3 Land Rover, I've got that one. It's a V8 set, by the looks of it. V8 set. So, we want a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, because we need to get the interest of these youngsters. Good job. Generating for a ride. About every three or four hours, you'll probably want to stop for five minutes uh, just to oil the motion work. Trevor Smallbone is probably up there on the footplate, worked with Jim and has now had to take on the mantle of being uh, Jim's successor, I suppose, which is uh, uh, not a, a job to be taken lightly because uh, Jim was a great enthusiast, very, very knowledgeable about all types of engines. It's porky! <laughs>
Tarmac, tarmac, flatman. Well, what would it be about laying track down straight? 